So let's have a look in the box. So first we get a pretty nice uh, box art. We do get uh, our Simrit marking here so you know <clears throat> so you know that the kit comes with it. On the side we have our six marking options which are from Cartograph. We have some CAD drawings of the Fagel and then on the back we have an exploded diagram again. This is a, a CAD drawing. We get DS tracks but we'll be using the Kaizen for this. Uh, we have various other details. We have options of cupola. We have options of escape hatch as in a different type of hinge work. We can have the engine starter either or the engine heater in place or not since we're doing a Normandy Fagel. I doubt we'll be using that. We do get a recoil option on our 88 main gun. However, this is a plastic main gun rather than a turned um, aluminium. This is when Dragon is beginning to uh, be a bit more cost effective with their kits, but this is still in the heyday of Dragon and not the shit that they're giving us now. We do get two types of brake for our main gun. We have a very nicely detailed bow machine gun position with our gun sight and headrest and what have you. We do have conduit cable for our headlight under the uh, underside detail again on our lower hold, very normal stuff. Workable tension bars or torsion bars. Tools again, with or without clasps, they do come with photo etch, which is cool. And we have uh, some detail on the air duct and I believe the fuel tanks. So let's uh, crack open the box and see what we get inside. Grand, I'm gonna open it. There we go. So it's been a while since I've seen a dragon kit. I'm so used to looking at Suka Sherman's, I'm almost forgotten just how many parts we get. So let's have a proper look at the various details of this kit and see what we get. So starting with the instructions, again we have our standard dragon style instructions sheet. I have built one of their tiger ones in the past, which is pretty much the same kit but without simmers molded on. And the instructions, if I remember correctly, should go together pretty well. We do have quite a bit of blue, as always, from Dragon. Um, even though my opinion of having loads of spare parts in the kit is beginning to change after I've gotten into the Sherman as heavily as I have. Uh, and this isn't too bad. So again, if you are a, a Tiger fan, you do have a lot of choices of mantlets, rear plates, what have you. As well as different types of sprockets and idlers. So that's not a bad thing in its own right. So step one as always, we're beginning with our torsion bar and wheel assemblies. We have our um, our hull extensions, I believe, what these are. I might, if I get anything wrong with this, I am sorry, because uh, Tiger isn't really my thing. I, I, I don't know too much about it, so I will give it a good go. <coughs> we have our choice of idlers. It has us put in the wheels. I'm actually going to leave my wheels out and paint everything separately and then put them in post-build. I don't even mind gluing um, painted parts together as long as you just do it carefully, you don't run into any problems with it. Some modelers like it, some don't, it's really just up to personal preference. Uh, we're on to step four here, we have um, certain, uh, I think it's like uh, Octylon 101 has their divisional marking on various different parts, but basically they'd remove the cinemas around the area where the unit em emblem would go. So it gives you the option of cutting away the simmeret on the rear plate, putting a filler plug in, and then you have a, a blank piece of armor plate to put the, uh, say, the first SS um, emblem into that place. That's the uh, first in your building. So that's nice. That's quite a nice uh, um, addition that Dragon taught to do that. We're going into our exhaust mufflers and our armor shrouds. Our jack is pretty nicely detailed, again a lot of parts. The the dragon jacks are pretty nice. Then we're adding in our our rear mud fenders, our our S hook, I believe that's called, if I remember correctly. And then we're putting in, I believe these are our, our cooling, um, both our cooling system and our the radi these radiators, I believe. So we do have like radiator assemblies, that's the what that's what the what these are. Sorry, I'm I'm almost have to do kind of rejog my memory to what these parts are. So I believe these are radiators. Again, if I'm wrong, do correct me. And you can model the louves for these open or closed on the engine deck. So you can um, model them if you want. 
which is cool. Step eight, we're going on to the front plate of the vehicle. So we have our very nice Bow MG uh, 34 machine gun, complete with its ammo bag, sight, headrest. Oh, very, very nice. We're one of the few companies that do a really nice, well detailed machine gun. We have our engine um, hatch here, or access hatch for our engine. Very nice. No engine is obviously su supplied in this kit, just in case you guys aren't familiar with the Dragon Tigers. We have options here on the rear of our front plate here of uh, areas that we can blank out um, to remove the simric depending on, on the unit. So again, do refer to your reference to know what area you're meant to cut out as different companies had their em unit emblems on either side of the vehicle. It was just a, a quick and easy way for uh, commanders to identify what companies their respective vehicles belong to at a glance. Then we're adding our fission port for our driver, and now we're starting to come into our Pioneer tools. These do come in uh, metal, so we'll see will these actually conform. Sometimes the uh, strain steel that they use for these tow cables can be a bit uh, can be a bit stiff. It's a little bit hard to shape it, but we'll see how well this one behaves. Our uh, convoy light, our Bosch light, or is this a Bosch light? Yeah, it's a Bosch light. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I've always forgotten. We have some pretty handy formers for photo etch clasps. I'm debating do I want to try it, but I'm kind of frightened of small photo etch and I don't want to lose my mind, so I might not. We do have the option of either using the photo etch clasps or um, having options of tools with the clasps already modeled on. Adding more tools again to the upper hull. We're adding some photo etch onto our uh, lubes here for the engine. Some uh, detail here for the co-driver and driver hatches. And then some photo etch uh, guide marks here for doing your own clasps, which I probably won't be because they're scary. On the step 12, again, we're doing more um, grill cover here or grill work for the uh, engine exhausts or the cooling um, grills. Then we're mounting the upper and lower hull together. I would probably um, mount these together before I start doing the tools, just because um, I don't want to break anything once it's in place. That it, I can just see it can accidentally snapping off the headlight or something like that. So I would actually uh, glue these in place and then go back to these uh, steps and then place our, our tools onto the vehicle. Onto step 13, we're moving on to our, our gun breech. We do have to make an, a, an option here, so we have one for um, Aptylon 508 in Italy, and then we have another option here. So make sure you uh, um, you do your research, you know which one you're building. We do have options of muzzle brake. These are actually quite nice, these are all slide molded too. And then we have our plastic multi-piece uh, gun assembly for the 88. I am pretty sure these are all slide molded. Um, this would be this is this isn't a heyday drag, and I'd be very surprised if that's not. It's been a while since it's been like ten years since I built my own one, so I've forgotten a lot of this. Step fifteen, we have some very basic interior, some details here for the hatch. Again, we have options for cupola. Other options for um, configuring the turret roof to various uh, variants of the late type. Tiger, I believe. So again, your reference material is going to be important. Pretty busy little, <clears throat> excuse me, a pretty busy Commander Cupola, which is, I love these type of Cupolas that the Lay Tiger, Tiger 2 and Panther have. There's something about that type of design that I think is very cool. Then we're on to our storage bin on the back of the turret. We do get very nice and rather complex looking um, hinge assemblies here and little padlocks. I always thought it was a very cool addition that they, they added those. Then we're mounting our turret gun mantlet and gun assemblies to our cupola and turret roof. Step 18. Again, we're just mounting our escape hatch. We can model that open or close if you wish. And you can kind of get away with this. You do have a pretty nice gun breech assembly, so it's not an, an empty void if any of these hatches open, which is really good. Then we have obviously our, our choice of hinges here for the escape hatch. Again, 
depending on the vehicle you're building, do consort your resources or your references, should I say. The instruction or the painting guide will give you recommended parts to use. It's not the best way that they've done it, but I'll show you that in a moment. Step 19, we're just the final assembly, we're just adding some radio mounts and in the turret onto the vehicle and our mud flaps. We also add a small photo etch um, strip here, which is going to be a filler for where the um, simmer doesn't extend up onto the front of the vehicle. So we have six marking options here. So we have um, a tie along 102, Normandy 44. And see, as you can see here, it goes recommended parts. So best thing to do is, if you're, if you're just building them out of the box, study these parts, go back and mark them in the instructions so you don't miss them. We have second company again, Octalion 101, Norman D44. Which I think that might be the one I'm going to be doing. Or some, I think from the same, from the same company at least anyway. Then we have third Panzer Regiment, Totenkopf. Uh, Poland 1944. Again, we're back then to uh, Normandy with second company um, 50, uh, 50, or sorry, should I say 102 Normandy. First company 101 Normandy and uh, Heavy Panzer Battalion 508 Italy 44. As you can see here, it does list the various parts to use, so do keep that in mind when you're building them. So we have our little bags of goodies. So we have our tow cables, which is a little bit of steel. These might actually work. Um, they don't seem to be as stiff. So normally I, I tend just to leave these out because they never seem to conform correctly. I do believe we have a plastic, uh, we do have a plastic choice if we want to use that instead. But these should work just fine. So that, that's our, um, our tracked uh, changing cable. Then we have our main tow cables. Again, in steel, yeah, these are quite stiff. So we'll, we'll see how well these things conform. But I think there might be a plastic um, option that me being me, I'll probably use. Then we have photo etch sheets, quite a few of them actually. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not used to dragging in um, giving us this much photo etch anymore. So we have stuff here for our cooling um, our ducts here, if you will. We have little wing nuts other little clasps and mounting brackets here for our tool clasps. Really nice. Then we have our engine grills, which are already preformed. They have the little lip already bent into them. I'm not going to take these out because I'll end up losing them. Besides, most of you have probably seen these tigers by now anyway. I'm just pretty blown away by this. We have our conduit, which is already preformed piece of uh, wire. We also have our shovel guard, that little brass piece here. And then we have our recoil spring for our main gun. We also have this small piece here, which is a photo etch fret or strip, which is meant to replicate um, a small strip of simmert that's meant to fit on the top of the front plate of the tank. Then we have our decal sheet, which is printed by Cortograph. You can't I don't know how well you guys can see it. Yeah, there you go. So we do have some uh, pretty nice tactical markings. These are Cortograph decals are not going to give us any trouble whatsoever. I probably won't be using these markings. I, I do have a set of them, uh, just sort of num numbers lying around in my bits box. So I'll be doing my own vehicle, which more on that in a different video. Again, really nice. Cortograph are probably the best decals out there. You can't beat them. So starting with the lowered hull tub, again, one piece moulding, very, very crisp as we've come to expect from Dragon. We do have some basic underhull detailing, including some very nice sunken well seams. Very, very nice. Our reinforcing ribs here for the hull sponsons. And here comes the Irish rain. Very nice, and the simmer plates will fit over this to give us our, our simmer uh, effect. Then we get a one piece slide molded simmer it uh, turret. And as you can see here, the simmer is really, really nice. 
Some people find this to be a little bit overscale. However, I actually quite like this. Um, I, I like it to be a little bit exaggerated. It just means it immediately stands out and the molding is flawless. There's a little bit of microscopic flashing here that literally you run your finger over and it falls out, which is nothing really to criticize in any way. Very, very nice. Then we have a, cl a clear sprue, L sprue, which has our periscopes, our driver's fission port, and our, the periscopes for the commander's cupola. They're very nice. Now I tend to just paint these black. I very rarely ever mask them off. But some people do uh, mask them and they do get very nice effects, I have to say. So moving on to sea sprue. So we have some details that most of us will be very familiar with. We have some of the cable tie downs for the tow cables up here. Our two um, exhaust shrouds for our, our engine, for our mufflers. I will probably leave these off. I, I need to come, I, I'll, I'll have to check my my sources to see do, does the fake I want the model have these on or off. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, a little bit of flashiness on, on some of these parts. So I think like the, these molds are beginning to show their, their age because these kits are getting old now. We're well, not old, but they're getting along. So the molding, might, the molds might be kind of deteriorating. We have our one piece uh, mud fenders or dust fenders. They're a little bit thick, as you can see here. But you could take a Dremel and just drill them out and they'll be fine. And then you could cut them up and uh, basically like uh, damage them if you want. It's really up to yourself. We have some tools here with our our parts, or with our class molded on. And because I'm a big wuss, I'm going to be uh, using them. We have more tie downs for tool clamps and for probably cable retention. We have the storage tube for the antenna, I believe that is. Again, if I'm wrong, do let me know. And then we have our one of our drive sprocket options. I think this one's. I think this one we're not using. But again, the detail, as you can see here, is so crisp. It's really, really nice. Moving on to D sprue. So we have some gun mantle assemblies. So we have these formers here, which, if I remember correctly, these are actually for our um, our DS tracks that you can put them in. Uh, glue them together and then keep them off the tank and this helps them keep their shape I believe or are they the jigs for the magic track I, I can't remember if this kit ever came at magic track to be honest the one I got years and years ago didn't either and that was the uh, non-simmed version again we have a nice gun mantle here for e-crisp as always we have our commander's cupola roof is that damaged oh don't be damaged no it's not no. that's our um, the piston for Lifting and closing the hatch, I believe. We have some um, ventilation covers here. Our, I think that's our, either our commander seat or our loader seat. The mount for the MG34 anti aircraft mount that will be up on the cupola. As well as the brackets here for the uh, spare track link mounts that go up on the turret wall. Again, really, really nice. Then we move on to Ore Sprue, which is our. Uh, storage bin again really cra uh, crisp lovely very very fine rivet detail here very fine the camera barely picks it up in fact then we have more of our locking um, clamps for our spare links for the thir um, third sides the interior hatches for our bin so you can model these open or close if you wish we have the armor Sorry, we have the armor cover for our gun sight. So we're gonna start moving on to the bigger sprues now and seeing seeing what type of detail we have on this. So we move on to P sprue. Quite I believe quite a few parts we will not be using from this sprue. But we have our mud fenders, again, really nice, very crisp, some lovely hinge detail there. This is from the Befells Tiger. So this is a tube that would mount on the back of the engine plate and the that would um, mount the star antenna, so that's the storage tube for that, I believe. We have our driver co-driver hatches. And again, some lovely interior detail on those bad boys. Like A lot of love went into these um, early Dragon kits. Dear God, were they, were they works of art. We have our plastic tow cables, and because I'm a big wuss, I'm going to be using them. 
we have our whole sides that we won't be using so we're going to be using pretty much the same silhouette as this but they're going to have sim rather than blank but again really nice detail we have like the, the mounting lugs here for our uh, mud fenders we have our track cha uh, changing cable here I believe it's very cool uh, we have our front plate that we won't be using here our jack block various other tools and these are the barrel cleaning rods if I recall correctly as well as probably a mounting bracket for one of the interior seats so a lot going on in that sprue and then we get two of these sprues and these are our road wheels as well as uh, some of the interior detail for the cooling system if I recall correctly so I'm just going to look at one sprue, no point looking at the two again very very crisp detail on these road wheels and these are the real sexy um, steel wheel road wheels I really like them they make the tiger and the late panthers just look so angry like they look makes them look like real apex predators you know they're mean and bestial almost and I like that it's like we have our idler and then we have our, our dry sprocket again crisp very very crisp and then we have I believe these were made out of wood on the original if I remember correctly because that does look like wood grain so again just very very nice detail then we move on to East Brew which has some of our turret details so we have two turret roofs I'm going to have to confer to my manual to see actually which, which is for what again my knowledge isn't good enough off the top of my head to really comment on which is for what but again what I can comment on is immensely crisp detail on these again lovely lovely seam um, well seams or well beads lovely rivet detail here also a little bit of a kind of texture that you get on the dragon kits that I've actually quite missed again once you paint over that you never see it but uh, it's one of the things I used to like about building these kits we do have two options here a gun mantlet again both are immensely crisp and look the part our loader's hatch again nice detail on both sides crisp as we've come to expect from dragon at least they're old stuff anyway our option of hinges for our escape hatch and again we do have a locking mechanism that fits onto the back of our escape hatch and then we have one of our gun brakes again one piece slide molded lovely no fiddly bloody seams to work with here moving on to f sprue so we have our front plate here at the glazes plate if i recall correctly i'm completely secluded in my train of thought today and you can see the molded on simmerate again it might be a little bit uh too heavy for people a little bit overscaled however i actually quite like that because sometimes i prefer the aesthetic over cold hard accuracy like for me it's a, a furry um has to be kind of like a blend of both for me to find a model attractive and uh, this is very much so for me so that's the type of simmer i like then we have our two options of rear plate that we will not be using either because there's no simmer on them but again i'll just give you a quick look as again the detail is very very nice we have our hull extensions i believe these are called again i can see all the tiger guys face pamming as they watch the sherman guy try and feign to try to explain what the hell these parts are all i can say is they're nice they're such nice moldings on these guy i forgot what great kids we also have just notice we have options of um loaders hatch i think this is one that we're using that looks kind of more sleek and streamlined it kind of seems like something a later tiger would have but again i could be wrong again lovely detail on both sides so this is our main simmerit sprue so we have our front glazes here again simmerit's lovely heavy but i don't mind a little bit of flash here and there but literally just run your finger over it it'll come off our rear engine plate again really really nice and the nice thing too is when it's tooled with simmerit on it you already have the locator pins for your tools you don't have to like by put needles through them or put wire through them so you don't accidentally push you over them if you're making your own simmer that is always always a big big help because it can be such a headache sometimes as you can see here we have a, a piece here like a recess that's cut into the plastic or molded in and if you hold this up to the light you can see the light through it and what that is we place one of these little plates in here 
and when you cut that out that gives you a blank spot and that's where you can put your divisional emblem depending on what unit you're working with. We have our gun mantlet again lovely simmert it's very very nice. Our escape hatch again simmed up from plate and then we have these large side plates that we fit onto the side of the tank and that's going to be our our um, hull sides. It's absolutely deadly. Yes, um, Simmered often did get damaged so you'd have chips and that's one of the handy things of doing it yourself. You can basically mask little pieces with hammy tape or whatever or just scrape it away and have the, the bare metal shown under true or the, the armor uh, steel underneath the, the, the Simmered paste. But that doesn't bother me. I, I kind of like having it all uniform and neat. And besides, it's not every day I, I get to build tigers. So, And again, very, very, very nice. Like the molding on this is top notch. Then we get a few sprues of track links. These are going to be your, your spare track links for either the front of the hull or the, uh, the turret sides. We have our torsion bars that are meant to be workable, but we'll see how well that goes. Really nice detail. Separate guide teeth and they're hollow, which is important. But then again, this is the heyday of dragon, so we expect nothing less. And we get four of those sprues, and we have our torsion bars and our spare individual track links. On to yet even more sprues. We have our plastic grills for our uh, exhaust or for our cooling loops for our engine deck. These can be modeled open or shut, which is cool, and we do have photo etch inserts that go into them. Again, really crisp and nothing to really complain about. Then we go on to our gun assembly. So the gun assembly is kind of unusual the way that they've done it. So we have cylinders that we place together with um, barrel chokes in between. So that should build up very nicely. And, and the nice thing is that they're all one piece. So there will be a very fine seam that you'll have to either sand or scrape away. But very easy to get a seam out of a, a one piece mold um, gun barrel even if it's plastic uh, this wouldn't really re require a metal gun barrel unless you just hate like dealing with seams we have another option of muzzle brake and then we have the actual main muzzle brake up here pistol ports from the earlier sherman or sherman jesus from the earlier tigers god almighty oh that probably upset a few of you didn't it um we have the early style dustbin style cupola. Uh, we have the shell basket here for the ejected rounds. Lovely, lovely, lovely. On to case brew. So we have our hull roof, if you will. Lovely, lovely detail. I absolutely love their well seams. Like they, they, they look just so like perfect. Like in, it's one of the things I quite like about the German tanks is their the recessed wells that they used to do. Oh, it's really nice. Like just the, the molding in this just blows me away. We have some Pioneer tools here that have their tool clasps already molded on for us scaredy cats, because I'm going to be using them too. We have our front plate or our, our deck plate here that we're not going to be using because there's no simmert on that. So into the spare bits box it goes. On to J Sprue. So we have our, I can use our fuel tanks. Is a really nice one piece assemblies and some amount of this will be visible through some of the loose um it's still nice as there i think dragon one of the first companies actually include these if i remember correctly we have our mg34 bow machine gun mount here it's a pretty uh, involved little step building that but it's a lovely little assembly once it's built we have our cooling fans here as well as more hatches for our co-driver and driver. So obviously we have to make sure we pick the right one. We do have our early style convoy lights. So again, they're going to probably go into, this, into the bits box. Very nicely detailed fire steam measure. It's very nice. And so again, detail is very crisp. I'm sure most of you have seen this before. And Beast Brew just has our, our shrouds for our mufflers, some more options for idlers, uh, some more options again for dry sprocket, our details for the armoured louver for our 
um, driver's vision port if you will, final drives, so again very nice detail on this. This should build up pretty quick, it's, it's a pretty involved build but it should be a pretty nice build. And a few parts that come off, their sprues, which what did I do with them? Oh, yeah. We have our two, we have our two cupolas. We do get two options. The only difference is one seems has a drainage drainage vein and one doesn't. So again, the German armor fans amongst you will know what you're looking at better than I. I just know it shoots at me and I don't like it. And these are really nice. And again, these are my favorite type of uh, cupolas of German tanks. I think these things look so cool. It's very modern looking. And that is all the parts of this kit. So there you have my inbox review of Dragon's Tiger 1 late production with Simmert. I might actually might as well add the reference number 6383. Really nice kit. And this is going to be my entrance, uh, my ent entry for Adam Mann's Tiger Group build. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to painting this up. So do join me when I do um, a build video for this kit. Uh, I want to finish off my Thunderbolt first and then we'll uh, swing over and work on its opposing opposite number. So thanks very much for watching guys. I really hope you found this video interesting and slightly entertaining watching me trying to figure out what the hell all these German parts are for. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.